All right, so this here is Neutron 2 and it's been updated with workflow in mind and so is Ozone 8 and I'm really excited to see these changes. Many of the new features for Neutron 2 are actually outside of the mothership here. And there's the tonal balance control and then there's also the visual mixer. And we're gonna jump into both of those in a little bit. But first I wanna talk about the track assistant because the track assistant is kind of what started the revolution of machine learning and AI inside of mixing and mastering plugins. It's phenomenal. It was phenomenal in Neutron 1 and now it's actually been upgraded in Neutron 2 to do a better job. So let's go ahead and try it out. I've got a track I'm working on here. And inside of this track I've got a drum loop which the Neutron mothership is on right now. So let's go ahead and run the track assistant. I'm gonna go ahead and click the button. And if you're not sure what the track assistant is, what it does is essentially uses machine learning to analyze the track and give you a custom preset depending on whatever you're feeding into it. So right now I've got this on a drum loop and I can help the track assistant by choosing percussion here, but I'm actually gonna let it go ahead and auto detect to kind of show you how good it is at doing its job. It's almost always on point and it's really impressive. We also have three styles to choose from, balanced, warm, and upfront. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on balanced for now, and also intensity. So this is how much processing the track assistant is gonna do for us, and I'm gonna leave it right on medium because that seems like a good place to start. And the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and play the track and hit the next button. And that's a big difference and it sounds a lot better. Let's go ahead and bypass the results. And you'll notice down here in the neutrino setting, it's detected drums and percussion and that's what it is. So that's perfect, right? And what's really cool about the track assistant is all it's done is kind of giving me starting points for each one of the modules it thinks the sound source needed. So you can see here it's applied an EQ, an exciter, and a compressor. It's left the gate off, the transient shaper, and the second compressor. So let's say I didn't want that much of an excitement. I can get in and adjust these bands individually or I could just turn down the blend right here. Awesome. There's also learn features in most of the modules and what the learn feature does is listens to the incoming audio and then moves certain parameters around to give you an idea of where Neutron thinks, you know, the frequency split should be for example. Let's try it out inside of the exciter here. So you can see that it's moved the frequency split here for me and saying, hey, this is a probably a good area to have your frequency split between the bass and the highs and the mids. You'll see that the EQ has that learn feature and even the compressor has that learn feature as well. Really, really great stuff. Again, it's the machine listening and telling you and helping you get better results. I love it. There's also the new gate module. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick. And look at that, that's a three band gate. That's pretty impressive. It also takes internal or external side chaining. If we wanted to turn it on, we can go external if we wanted to. And you'll find that side chain feature in the equalizer. If I jump into this node, turn on the dynamics, and then I can turn on the side chain. And again, I'll have it here for each one of the dynamic EQ nodes. And also the compressors have them as well. Again, down here, we can activate it and use it here as well. And that's just some, not all, of the updates, upgrades, and additions to Neutron 2 in side of the mothership. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is what's called the visual mixer. This is the visual mixer and it's awesome. What it is, is exactly what it's titled, a visual mixer. So you can see I've got four options here on the right side. And what I can do is select, say, the EQ chords, and while the track's playing, I now, from this visual mixer, have the ability to change the gain on the track, the panning on the track, and even the stereo width on the track, all inside of the visual mixer. So each one of the tracks, 
inside of my project that have an instance of Neutron on it, either the equalizer, the compressor, or anything else, they show up right here in this graph. So let's say you have a group or a track inside of your project that you want to be able to use inside of the visual mixer, but you don't have any Neutron 2 elements on it. You don't have the EQ, the mothership, or the compressor, for example. Inside of the Neutron 2 download, you get what's called Neutron 2 Mix Tap. I've got it right here, and all you need to do is drop it on whatever channel you want, and rename it obviously, it helps when you're doing the visual mixing. And if I close out of here, you'll see that that mix tap is right here inside of the visual mixer. And I have full control over that group inside of the visual mixer. And like I said at the beginning of this video, the update had a huge focus on workflow. So now we can do our mixing we can do our balancing, we can do any of our gain adjustments, panning adjustments, and stereo adjustments all inside of here for all of our tracks without ever having to leave the visual mixer. So let's go ahead and try it out. So that gives you a feel of what you can accomplish inside here. Now there are a couple of tricks of using the visual mixer that I want to tell you about. If you double click after you've made a change, it will move back to the zero position. So that's centered and at zero dB. And you also need to know that this is relative to any changes that you have inside of your project. So my group could be negative three, but when it's inside of the visual mixer, it's gonna start at zero dB. So if I move down negative three dB in here, the group is actually gonna be at negative six dB. So that's something to keep in mind. These are relative values, not official values. Another thing too, is if you start dragging down and then hold shift, you can stay in the center line. Or better yet, you won't do any panning because if I'm already panned to the left and I move up and down and hold down shift, I'm gonna stay wherever that panning is. So that panning isn't gonna change if I hold down shift. And that works the same way with panning if you don't wanna change the volume. Holding down shift and I can't move up or down while I'm holding down shift. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now these bars on the outside have to do with stereo width. So if I go ahead and put that up front, So I'm sure you're with me and I'm saying that this is gonna be a huge tool. Once you've got your track laid out, the idea is set in stone and you wanna begin adjusting volumes and levels and really doing your mixing, this visual mixer is gonna be a huge workflow improvement. Now, one other thing I wanna to touch on before we jump out of here, and that is the snapshots. So let's say I wanna make some changes like this. I can go ahead and click set and then I can make some other changes and then hit set and then just make one more change like this and hit set. Now obviously I wasn't listening or anything, but now if I click one, it's gonna go here, two, it's gonna get set up, three, so we can hold up to three different versions of the mix inside of the visual mixer so we can A, B, C those without leaving, without changing really quickly to hear which one sounds better. So that was just a few of the new features inside of Neutron 2. Obviously there's been a bunch of upgrades. There are things that are working better than they were in Neutron 1. Highly suggest grabbing it if you can. I didn't get to touch on everything because this is a four part video series and I didn't wanna keep you occupied for more than an hour. So anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.